Hey everybody, I'm super excited because today I have friend, former boss, and colleague Joe Spector, who is the president and general director at the Arizona Opera, where I was lucky enough to sing two different times. Hey, Joe, it's so great to see you again. Great to see you, Marco. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to have you here because I know you're a super open-minded person. And even more so, I think that, you know, you're around music literally 24-7, basically. So, I mean, besides doing the books and <laughs> all the things that go into being a, a general oh, that's, director. That's music of its own kind, Marco. It's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. symphony. Do you have any experience with video games, really? I go back to like Atari, but I had a Commodore 64. Oh my God. I had some of my oldest uh, and dearest friends were still connected and uh, video games was part of the context for that. And now my kids, I've got two girls, uh, Sophie and Charlotte, who are uh, 15 and 12. They've got Nintendo Switch. And so um, I'm continuing that journey through them. <laughs> they got Tears of the Kingdom going on right Aww. now. It's kind of fun to see them uh, taking up that mantle. I love it for them. That's awesome. Before we uh, went live, you said you were down for whatever. So I think I'm going to start with the only thing they fear is you from Doom. Did you, did you okay. ever play Doom? I've seen people play Doom. I, I kind of know Doom, but I, I'm otherwise a neophyte. <laughs> she woke up. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Oh, they're gonna drop it. You're gonna drop it right there. You'll see. You'll see. Oh, there you go. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Right? <laughs> Perceptive cadence. I know. <laughs> They like lost the drum kit here. <laughs> That's a chainsaw. <laughs> There's a drop. <laughs> there we go. They're going to wait like two minutes on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was quite the introduction to video game music in the year 2023 <laughs> that was fun i mean i'm a child of uh 90s music and listen to a lot of Rage Against the Machine and that kind of thing. So there's a, definitely a, like a spiritual connection there. And I loved hearing like where it would take kind of the core and then start departing chromatically and all that kind of thing. So so that was fun. I was worried about that character on the screen there. You know, I was thinking... <laughs> Doom guy? <laughs> yeah, Doom guy. You know, I... First of all, I got a lot of questions because I don't really know Doom that well. My first thought was, oh, I should use this music for like my ring walk music when I'm going to make pre-curtain speeches at the opera, you know, like. Oh, to get like, psyched up. <laughs> yeah, my psycho song. <laughs> but the more I listened to it, the more I was like, oh, man, Doom guy's like got some issues if this is like what's going on in his heart. And I was worried about him. Um, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of like hard, hardcore metal rock and stuff. I, I respect it. But but I think one of the reasons I like that piece so much is that it. it it is always keeping you guessing and there's no like structure to it, even though there very clearly is like, you know, it doesn't go A, B, A, A, B, C, A. It, it, it really kind of is doing its own thing. Like we noticed like in the first couple minutes waiting yeah. for that drop to happen, it actually yeah. just extends it for, you know, it's, it's so much fun to hear it yeah. that way. I kept, I kept having these like images in my head, like they're in the recording studio and they're recording this thing. And like, the drummer's hi hat fell over and the snare drum, and that's why they couldn't drop the beat until like like scrambling to like, like get ah. back up again. Something that's been really interesting for me is that I listen to a lot of music that I don't know the context for. It still causes an emotional reaction. I guess my question to you is: Does context matter? Like, would you love to know where in the game that song plays, or or do you think that there are certain pieces that stand on their own perfectly fine, both in opera and in video games? I like the idea of being with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the other guys getting dropped in the middle of the jungle to fight the predator and like not knowing exactly where you are at the beginning, you know? So <laughs> the, I, I, I personally like the idea of not being familiar with the context and letting the material kind of like lead the way. And then my mind will fill in the blanks. 
I think some people need more visual context or more story mm-hmm. con- like to feel like they can give themselves permission to enjoy it. But also the way I think about opera is, uh, you know, if we're doing our job right, you shouldn't need any of it in order to have an amazing experience and to get connected to the story very fast. I'm like you, like I listen to all of the Studio Ghibli, Ghibli Ghibli, I always forget. Ghibli Ghibli uh, is actually the way I say it usually, so I think that's right. <laughs> that music's amazing. I listened to all of that before watching the movies. When I went back and watched the movies, I was like, oh my God, that's the one song I that's really that, liked from listening yeah. to. Yeah, now that, um, that music is touring with like symphony orchestras now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, so, you want to talk about magical audio visual. I mean, those are those are operas. This one, we will have context and you can listen to the music in this remastered version of the song and also uh, watch what's happening on the screen. So you okay. this is great. Yeah, it's, this, is this is originally is from like the 1990s. That was funny. I, I mean, started out felt like I was listening to some rock and it sounded like a Quentin Tarantino soundtrack. And then there was <laughs> Maynard Ferguson coming out of nowhere and the trumpet. It's extremely bouncy. And actually, I'm kind of now that now that we're talking about this, I'm kind of wanting you to hear uh, the original. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. So you can tell like that, you know. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Action. <laughs> Still pretty darn good. Yeah, considering it came out in 1992. That was the year I graduated from high school. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. Is it is it though? <laughs> <laughs> but you're so still like alive? <laughs> <laughs> No, oh my god. I was 6 in 1992. No, so. uh, me too. I just was really super <laughs> You were smart just in band. You were yeah, I was, like, Doogie, <laughs> I was Doogie Howser. I'm an enormous fan of rhythm games. I love them. I think they're really fun and challenging. Maybe it's because I was an opera singer and opera singers are always told that they don't have rhythm and so now every time I see a game that involves music and dodging notes or hitting notes, I automatically am drawn to it. Everhood was a game I stumbled onto by accident on a Twitter stream. And when I tell you that this game became a bit of an obsession for me, I mean that. It's hard to talk about without spoiling. It's a really meaningful experience that I think that if you are into music and rhythm games, but I can't even call it a rhythm game because it really isn't. It is a musical adventure game. This game circumvents expectations and I really recommend you check it out if you're looking for something that is music based, existential, and will make you think when those credits roll. In fact, the game is available on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PlayStation 5, and 4 consoles, with 16 exclusive battles with songs from the composers of games like Donkey Kong Country, Fez, Ninja Gaiden, Mega Man, and Crypt of the Necrodancer, among others. 
Literally, it's one of my favorite games that I've ever played. It's so much fun, and I literally still, having played it a couple weeks ago, I'm still actively thinking about it pretty much, not hyperbole, every single day, because there's nothing like it. And it reminds me of a time when I was growing up with Guitar Hero, and I would sit there for hours trying to figure it out. Everhood somehow combines all the things I love between an interesting existential story, rhythm games, high intellectual thought, challenge, but not overtly difficult. It's awesome. And I seriously recommend you check it out, whether you are a new fan diving into this after watching this video, or if you've played Everhood like I have, these additions alone are worth a second playthrough, in my opinion. It's interesting to, to like hear where we are. And then if we, uh, Final Fantasy 16 just came out. My question to you is, do you want to hear the evolution of classical music? Or do you want to hear uh, an outright banger? A let's banger. get a banger, man. I, I right. live in the evolution of classical music. Let's 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 bang it out. Spoilers to anybody that hasn't finished Final Fantasy 16, as this will absolutely be a spoiler for you. The weather looks a lot like Phoenix right now. <laughs> that i mean obviously with the visuals it's like incredible right it like fits that scene weirdly well yeah it's amazing to look at the previous video and think this is even part of the same franchise once i decided that the reason this dude was running so fast was so he could get to a bottle of moisturizer at the top i kind of i I was just thinking, God, this guy needs some sunscreen or some moisturizer. And it's, you know, it's 115 in Phoenix today. I'm like, I feel you, man. Like, I just know this, like, Luberderm or something up there that's going to really help this guy out. And like that, and that made sense with the intensity of the music. Well, listen, whatever the context that you need, right? That's the thing. Music has variables. You don't need to know that he's fighting like, you know, his his nemesis and all this other stuff. Like as long as Luberderm is his savior. That's the, the dry, dry skin is his nemesis, you know? That was um, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't it cool? Just like seeing the evolution of like where it came from to where it is today. You know, it's it's absolutely insane. Crazy. Right? This piece is from Bayonetta three. Uh, it's called Fertile Rondo. People wanted me to react to this, but I haven't I haven't actually seen it or played it. So we're gonna listen to this together. We're gonna do this together. Yeah, I don't kinda, know. It feels kind of magical. But you know, I'm gonna find a way to tie Luberderm into this one too. You hear that harpsichord? That's funny. <laughs> like a pop song reminds me of uh, fifth element yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like popping and locking <laughs> yeah. this is this is uh, this is the this is the filament fifth element right now fifth element Even that little auto tune bit. That's exactly. Oh, no. This is crazy. <laughs> the way it was set up is so much like the Diva Pava Laguna scene in, in The Fifth Element that like yeah, I couldn't yeah, escape yeah. that. Even the use of the um, little auto tune section in there when I was popping and locking. Don't don't hate the player, man. Hate the game. I'll tell you the one challenging thing for me listening to music like that is that like up to this point i'm like in this imagination zone of the guy who really needs moisturizer and like yeah. jamming out on the guitar and the guy dropping his cymbals and stuff like that and i'm totally untethered just in joe land then this happens the joe who's listened to like thousands of auditions part of the <laughs> brain is thinking like i would have loved it if the onset <laughs> of that note was like this yeah. and you know i really wish the string was vibrating when she you know took this note and 
so I, I got brought brought back there. So thanks for that, Marco, reminding Sorry. me. That but, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, though, because the question is, can we, as people that are very well versed in the opera world, would you want to hear things that relate to classical music? Or would you want to like be rooted in something completely different? You know what I mean? Like I could play you right now. I could play you Lord of a Dead Empire, which has a baritone and you're a baritone. Like you're immediately right. probably going to go into technical brain if I play it. Well, I, it just depends on like everything, like food and and drink and physical activity. Where's your rhythm? Where's your energy in that moment? And I, and I love opera and I love opera singers. And, you know, part of my thing is like having been a singer, I'm rooting for singers. So yeah. when I'm hearing something like that fertile rondo, I do think about, you know, what's going on with that singer, but like it's from the perspective of, I would love to nurture it in that particular way. And it, and it taps into that thing. I like seeing how areas of pop culture engage with opera. What is organic? What is that perspective? And seeing like, not the caricature side, because I think, you know, you get you get that too. And their pop culture references to opera. But I like I like to see it when there's like an earnest homage sort of approach here in this, this track. I think they were they were trying to like say, I want to pull this cool opera vibe into this tune. And and that was what it was used like an instrument. That you have to let me hear the baritone one now. I'm sorry. Uh, like, yeah, no, I will. You got to know now, huh? You did some good curiosity marketing. Definitely put me into baritone, baritone yeah. math mode. <laughs> You're like, mm, nope, that's a little open throat, a little too white. Co- yeah. Bianca, Apoja. Apoja. <laughs> Apoja. <laughs> it's a beautiful track. It, it like fits the mood really well. But it's funny that I also listened to this and I was immediately like, okay, it was one of the first videos I filmed. I'm over here like talking technique, like how it's done, where the placement yeah. is, you know, the open, maybe the F sharp, a little too open, could have closed, you know, and it's all of a sudden yeah. it's like, but then it, it's interesting to me. This is uh, from a game called Punishing Grey Raven. The character is actually a, um, an artist, a singer, a director. I can't remember, Selena. Um, and she actually, her weapon is a flute called uh, Zarastro. It's hilarious. It starts very typically. shift now okay Danny Boy drums back again. <laughs> Anvil's nice. 
Dolphins River Dance. <laughs> yeah. Now the shift. Here right. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Fidelio. <laughs> I love how it moved from like this very tribal, folky kind of sound into that modern world with all electric instruments. And, and then I was listening to the sampling in there too. I, I would say the one thing that's the through line is total embrace of a groove. And we don't, yeah. we don't often do that in classical music in 2023, giving people permission to like, you're going to hear this 70 times in a row. <laughs> and we're just going to like tweak this one thing. And, yeah. and I love it. Like when they pop in like this thing you expect to be major and it's minor or vice versa, like, and, and just playing with those little elements. And it's that thing that gives you a little dopamine hit. You hear that it's different and it, and it like, oh, and now I've got to pay attention again. Yeah, but. it really to me is like a, an evolution of classical music in the sense that we're allowing um, play, which is so hard to do when, and you know this as well as I do that, like, you know, when you're getting in there and you're trying to perform at your best level, it's a performance practice. And so what's beautiful about this is that you can kind of, this deviates from what we know as like the standard approach to art song yeah i like the art song bit though i mean that if you told me that was like schumann uh, you know after a couple brandies i'd be like okay yeah like <laughs> okay do you want to go classical or do you want to go like upbeat jazz upbeat jazz you never see it Done this for us. I really want to know what spun it is. <laughs> That's such a banger, in my opinion, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. What's that game about? You know, it's funny. I played 115 hours of it, and I can't even... Uh, uh, they're kids in high school. They It's like a social sim. Plays like the old school Final Fantasies. You go into people's subconsciousnesses and stop bad things from happening. Oh, yeah, I can relate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a million years, that is not the theme that, game that I would have come yeah. up with. I'm like, is this a video game about like walking through Times Square in 1973? listening to like the Starsky and Hutch soundtrack. You know, like, <laughs> slap the bass. Slap the bass. At this point, I, I think I've played this for the last three people that have been here, but honestly, I never get tired of it. I would love it if this was like you singing Recondita Harmonia. <laughs> just, just, I just never get tired of this. Oh, you know, wow, that happens to be me. Little turn there. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is Sopranos. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can hear these. I can hear these Sopranos talking about this number of eggs <laughs> in the studio <laughs> just wait just wait it gets better all right <laughs> oh. look at all these composers
Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I liked hearing like real singers mostly, or at least some real instruments in there. You could hear intonation issues and things like that, which I'm not judging. It's just like, it made it feel like it was a more like a real performance, which I liked. But that was a fairly merciless Tessitura in there for the time of the Sopranos. Tessitura is where, where the uh, voice sits. What's amazing about this piece is just how violent it is. You know, it's, it's yeah. a little like, aurally violent. About two minutes into it, though, I was thinking this is about a race of people that desperately need to get to CVS for some moisturizer. <laughs> But like in this version, it was cold weather and they were like on a sleigh, hybrid <laughs> wolf dog things, like just driving through and there's like oh. fire coming out of their eyes and stuff. And they're like, oh God, <laughs> damn it, my skin is so dry. Joe, why yeah. don't you tell everybody about who you are, what you do? I think I'd rather hear what you think I do. That would be more exciting. <laughs> I, know, I know what I do. What do people well, think a general director of an opera company does? A general manager of an opera works on the budget, works on making sure that the program is good hires uh, good singers, does donor events because we live in the United oh, States. Let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> these, these sound so good. You do opening night speeches. You tell other people what to do. It's interesting because, I mean, before I was actually a general director, I didn't know. Remember the show Greatest American Hero? My first two years of being a general director were a lot like that episode. <laughs> like you get the super soup, but there's no instruction book, you know, <laughs> because the, who teaches a class on how to be a general director? Maybe nobody maybe. does. No, all those things sound good, but it it's the ratio of stuff that's probably more interesting the than the list. <laughs> yeah. If I ever came back to the opera world, I would definitely want to be an artistic director. I would like to help hire the singers and I would like to help pick the operas. I really mean this. That's about 5% of the job. When you see those things come to life, yeah, it's of course. rewarding out of any proportion. Um, but, it's, but certainly in relationship to the amount of time we spend you know, casting and thinking about repertoire and things. There's, there's, there's so much more to do. And it mostly has to do with building relationships with people, which is what you're doing here, you know, because that human connection is what people are really looking for. And the music brings people together. The opera yeah. brings people together. If we create a space where people can gather virtually or at Arizona Opera, then that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Because we're inviting people into our homes. You know what I mean? No, no, the art is what brings people together, but it's being together that makes it special, whether it's virtually or in person. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm all for digital content, um, but there's nothing that's exactly the same as being in the same physical space as a group of people. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's just something that happens energetically when you're sitting in, in a group of people and you're all experiencing the same that vibration, the way, yeah. yeah, and like this emotional content, the risk, of, and there's and there's a physical risk, like there is with any kind of acrobatics that comes with listening to a singer do these impossible feats and mm -hmm. and you when you're when you're near a group of people that are all you know like breathing that we start breathing in sync and there's a shared energy that's different than anything you can create just at home that that's what i live for more than anything i was also thinking you know here are examples of video games that are infusing their music with operatic and classical sounds. You know, what would it look like if we went the other direction? If you infused a, an opera with, with video game? I was like thinking, what if there's like this opera piece or opera video game called like Il Bacio di Tosca or something like that? And I'm, I'm stuck on Tosca because that's the last show we did together. What would that be like? I can't like, I mean, like, Unfortunately, I have like Tosca go. It's like a first player shooter where like where she's got like a minigun running through Scarpias. <laughs> but seriously, like, you know, could you take it from the other direction and take an opera that exists and take the core of an idea, you know, like Castle Wolfenstein or something like that? Yeah, like, yeah. Take it from the opera storyline perspective and just like fit that into a video game structure that would be familiar and retain, uh, obviously, like operatic elements for the music. I'd, I'd be really I'd be really interested to see where you'd go with that. You know, like uh, Dich Lieber or something like that, where yeah. each song represents like a stage in the game. Oh, my God. Know, will be, you know you know what I mean? There's plenty and, of avant-garde indie games like this. It could yeah. be made. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let you pick the last song before I okay. let you go. And then I have one piercing question for you after this oh is all okay. said and done. Sleeping in the cold below. Invincible. Nay, the honor is all ours. Faceless soldier. I'm, I'm giving you too many options now, but I know it's No, good. it's okay. I've, I've already okay. picked which one I want to listen to. I'm curious about Invincible. All right. This is from World of Warcraft.
there's a follow-up song called Arthas, My Son. So Invincible is his steed. and they're Yeah, no, I was reading the description. I never heard the word necromantically before, so I appreciate <laughs> having learned that. Is there a song that you've listened to in the last little bit here that like really has stuck out to you? you no, know, I, I really love all of it. I think what I've enjoyed the most about it is kind of you know, thinking about how all of this music connects through people through video games and video game is this medium where all of these kinds of sounds are completely normal because when you're not playing video games and you're like listening to the radio or, or streaming Spotify or whatever, this isn't necessarily what people think of as music. And if, if I said, you know, we're going to listen to some really jamming uh, Ukrainian sounding chorus work today, like you wouldn't do it. But but in the context of a video game, you'd be like, oh, man, this is bad. And I kind of love that. It does make me think about with opera, how could we describe it in a way that would be exciting to people? Because if you describe just what it is on a factual basis, it's hard to understand why it's going to get you so unbelievably fired up. It's really got my my uh, gear spin. So I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. I often wonder about how I can like figure out how to integrate this music into a concert that has Beethoven over or Mendelssohn or Clara Schumann or somebody, you know, and, and then throw some Arthas, my son, or some of the other pieces that we listen to that are completely legitimate classical works that, you yeah. know, could really expand and no one would be worse for the wear. No one would know. You know, it'd be interesting also is to take some of the, the visuals from one of these games and then layer it over an existing, you know, put it over Prokofiev, War and Peace or something <laughs> like that and see and see if it works just as well. I think they'd be almost interchangeable. How cool is that to think that oh, actually millions of people would listen to the music if you just inserted a little, yeah. little coffee up here and there. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your moisturizer. I'm Don't forget your paint. moisturizer. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Thanks a ton. It really means a lot. No, it was great, Mark. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. I really of course, it. of course. Yeah. And everybody, of course, feel free to like, subscribe. And if you want Joe back, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll get him back for a part two. So thanks a ton, everybody. And we'll see everybody later. Bye.